What a disgrace. I have not taken care of this vehicle very well. I feel horrible, but that's about to change. The girlfriend's going to get a little love. Oh, and by the way, I call this the girlfriend. Um, so just to give you a, a rundown of what it actually is, it's an 89 Trans Am GTA. Uh, came with a 350 TPI motor stock with a 700R4. Um, I, I put all forged internals into it, uh, bored 30 over, stroked it with 6 inch rods, comes out to be a 383, replaced the, it's got AFR heads on it, it's got a TPIS uh, intake, uh, it's got 1 and 3 quarter inch long tube hooker headers on there, uh, which dump into 3 inch collectors and go to a 4 inch mufflex exhaust. I, a couple years ago I did a, a T56 swap in here and once I did that uh, it started having some drivability problems. I don't know if the cam is too big and the computer can't compensate for it or if uh, there's something going on with the speedo uh, connections. So that really the plan is to get this running and drivable and then maybe start talking about doing like a mega squirt swap. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But all I really need to do is uh, just roll the motor over, spray some uh, WD-40 or something in the cylinders, uh, put the map, put the mass airflow sensor back on, and hopefully we'll get this thing running within a couple hours. All right, my plans to get this up and running have been uh, pushed aside. Well, kind of. We got a problem. Uh, we got some leaks going on in here. It was, well, it was last fall when I started, but uh, we're in uh, June of 21. So I got to take fuel pressure re regulator apart and check a couple things. I know that we got some bad seals here, uh, but what I'm concerned about is the diaphragm inside. Um, this is 10% ethanol gas, which is predominant throughout Minnesota. I'm sure it's standards everywhere else, but it's rotting eating my fuel system away because of lack of use and whatever but so that's the plan is to take this bad boy apart check make sure I don't need any other parts so we can get it fired up uh, see what else needs to be done other than a really great cleaning so stay tuned all right got the fuel pressure regulator out do you like my custom bracket that's what we call it's Friday night. Hurry the F up and get this thing installed so we can go racing. Uh, there's probably going to be a little bit of that on this car. Um, most of the work was done when I was in my late teens, early 20s. But yeah, we'll take this bad boy apart and see what, uh, see what the seals look like. All right, looking at the diaphragm, it doesn't look like there's any rips or anything like that that I should be concerned about. Uh, these things were a are a bugger. I gotta go put these in a vise and figure out how not to ruin this and take them out. But yeah, I think uh, just a couple of seals. Um, looking at this one, I mean, you can see it's crushed. Um, so I, I think what I need to do is just, I'm just gonna replace all the seals. This is good, I'll put that back together. Uh, and then once I get the seals, we'll proceed. Well, I got the fittings off. This is the return fitting. And it's crushed just like the rest of them, and there's some pieces of it kind of coming off. Uh, this is just a plug that I originally showed you, and this is the inlet side. I don't believe the inlet side was leaking, but I think I'm just going to replace all the seals anyway. The other thing I wanted to mention too is, let's see if you guys can see that at all, but down in here there seems to be some rust deposits. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this orifice out and then I've got a pick. I'm gonna get all the crud out of there because I really don't want that going into my injectors because well this is all after the the two filters I got, so yeah. So we'll order up some, some of the seals and get this all back together. I'll show another clip. Uh put me this putting back together, we'll set the fuel pressure, fire this bad boy up and then see if there's any other problems. All right, so I'm gonna take a look and see how this came out.
you can see in the bucket there's a bunch of crap floating around in there. All I did was take like a tablespoon of Dawn, some warm water, and if you remember there was a bunch of gunk in here and there's still a little bit in there. Not sure if you can see that or not. It's pretty hard to tell through the screen. But what I did was I've got this handy dandy little tool pick set. And really what I did was I took the pick and I ran it all the way around where all the stuff was and got most of it out. And then from there just soaked it in some warm warm water and some Dawn. Got my little toothbrush here and for the most part it looks like it got everything pretty decent I don't I don't see that there's any corrosion in there there's there's still a little bit on the edges uh, I'm gonna try and get all that out but it looks like it did a pretty good job it didn't damage anything cleaned it up pretty good so I don't know if it was the pick or soap but either way in my book it will clean it up dry it off and and then I gotta run to the store and buy some seals all right, let's take a look at a different angle here. The cleaning looks like it did a pretty good job just soaking in the bucket. All the threads look pretty good. Mainly just concerned about any of these contaminants going through the fuel pressure regulator because, well, I don't want to clog up my injectors. We'll see if those are still good here in, uh, in a little bit. Um, otherwise, I'm just looking to run to the store, grab some seals and some oil, change the oil in this thing, put everything back together and see if it'll fire. Got to set the fuel pressure as well but um, yeah I'm gonna start getting this thing back together. The regulator's back in. Let's see if we got any leaks. We gotta go find those pesky keys. Put the head reset now. I just can't win. Okay, let's try it with a battery charger. No, there's not a uh, tornado warning. That's the uh, chime in my car. So let's see where the fuel pressure is at. It looks like, looking at the manual, it's supposed to be 41 to 47 pounds. And I got it set at 45, so I think we're good. I'm also not seeing any leaks, which is always a good sign. You need to check the fittings on the back of the intake manifold though. All right, so we got the uh, fuel pressure regulator installed. Um, we have fuel pressure set. Uh, the one last thing, I, I did change the oil in this and replace the filter. Uh, which I'm sure everybody knows how to do that by now, so I won't show it. Um, next thing we need to do is I need to deal with uh, this sensor right here, throttle position sensor, TPS. Um, need to set it to 0.54 volts uh, on the center lead, uh, and then you just run the other one to ground. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that. Let's get this set up. That's kind of weird. I wonder if the batteries are dying. Well, that's not good. What is the deal with batteries these days? I use this at least once a month. Great. Anybody else having problems with the uh, tools that they've had for, I don't know, a decade or so? And the batteries just crap out and ruin it for you? 
Okay, essentially what we're going to do here is uh, stuck a lead. This is actually, I think, from a cell phone where you can push the uh, push the pin in and get the chip out. Um, I've also used thin paper clips as well. You could probably get these leads in here, but I want to try and preserve this as much as possible. But anyway, hand tightened these Torx bits so we can move and it'll stay in position. So the next step, and it's going to be a little loud because uh, I've got my, fi my fans wired to come on with ignition, but uh, we're going to plug this in. We're going to turn the key forward and we're going to measure for point, point four. 0.54 volt. Alright, I got everything tightened down. We'll uh, do a quick voltage check. Pretty darn close. The other thing. I think we're pretty close and the other thing you should see too is you go from no throttle to wide open if you go slow enough you should see it incre incrementaling up nice and not skipping or doing any weird stuff um, I, I don't know if this is the right tool to be using for that but uh, I don't have any dead spots at least that I'm aware of in my throttle positioning so we'll see what happens uh, next step maybe I'll test fire this it's all ready to rip I do need to get uh, vacuum to this. Um, if you don't run vacuum here when you fire the car up, it's going to run at whatever we set it at 45 psi all the time, um, which which I'm I'm sure is probably okay. But you're going to be dumping a ton of fuel in, which creates heat, which does things like this. Yeah, melts the paint right off your plastic. So, um, so we'll get that plumbed. Maybe I'll do a test fire real quick. It's crummy outside, so I'm not going to be bringing it out into the driveway to get rained on. Um, would like to wash it. We'll see what happens. I don't know if we're not getting fueled with rails or if we're not getting any spark. So let's try a spark. Well, I think we can call it a fuel issue. Okay, we proved that we're getting fuel. Uh, we're getting spark. Now let's see if we're getting uh, signal to the injector. So I'm gonna turn the key on. We've got the voltmeter hooked up. I don't know if that's the right probe, but it's one of the two, so let's see. Well, we're getting 12 volts. That's good. So now what? <laughs> 